So this is the second lesson for Chemistry 20, the first module. Um, and today we're going to be talking about measuring energy. So how do we measure energy? We do it using uh, the science of uh, calorimetry. The calorimetry is the technical process of measuring the energy changes of an isolated system. So you produce an isolated system in this process. Now, the isolated system is the calorie meter. Okay, this is the isolated system in which the chemical system being studied is surrounded by a known quantity of liquid. Okay, so here let's have a look. You have a motorized stirrer, so it helps um, increase the, the rate of temperature change. Okay, um, you have electrical leads for igniting a sample, the thermometers measuring the temperature changes. Uh, insulated container, you have an oxygen inlet, and that inlet is to allow combustion to occur, right? Uh, the bomb, <laughs> it's the bomb, man. Uh, this is the reaction chamber, okay, so that little area right there, reaction chamber. Uh, fine wire in contact with sample, and uh, cup holding the sample. Now the water is around. Now water is used quite often because it has a, you know, a very well-known um, specific heat capacity. Okay, so temperature changes can be um, used to calculate the, the energy output or the energy, I guess, uh, that's taken out of the system or out of the water into the substance if it's an endothermic reaction. Okay, so if we're going to burn a match, uh, you can put a, you know, graph up there of uh, potential energy um, in the system versus the surroundings. Okay, so if you have a change in energy where the reactants what we see here have a higher potential energy than the products, then you know there was an energy released uh, to the surroundings as heat. And this is known as an exothermic reaction. Okay. Um, so just going back, so exothermic is when you have potential energy of the reactants is more than the products, and there's energy released to the surrounding. That's exothermic. Now, in an endothermic reaction, there is the reactant that takes in energy, and the product has more potential energy than the reactant did. Okay? So before and after the reaction you can sort of uh, see like in an endothermic reaction the system had less potential energy to begin with but after the reaction it had more so that is one way you can determine it's an endothermic reaction okay now this one this is exothermic so the system had more energy before the surroundings did before but after um, the surroundings have more of the energy. Okay, so caloric values. This is, um, you know, when you talk about calories that are in different substances, uh, this is the energy that they contain. So notice you've got two different types of calories here. You've got this calorie small c, which is 4,000 per gram, compared to the calories with the big C, which is 4 per gram. Well, so you need to really pay attention whether the big C or the little c is being used. Quite often when you have packages, uh, you know, that are on food and they're showing the amount of calories, they're showing the amount of big C calories, which is actually, you know, equal to about 17,000 joules for four calories. Okay, so uh, yeah, that makes a difference. And you can see out of the, you know, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, which one has the most calories? Well, fats by quite a bit. Look at that. It's like over double. Okay, so here it shows in the bottom here, 1,000 little c calories equals one big c calorie. Okay, now science, we use the little calories. So when we're using a calorimeter, you know, measuring values, 
Uh, we're using the small C calories, which uh, are a lot closer um, to joules. Quite often, we actually use joules in, in Canada. Okay, but a big C calorie, you want to remember, is a thousand little C calories. And one little C calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. So, you know, four and a little bit joules equals one little C calorie. So you'd need like 4,184 joules to equal one big C calorie. So here is a coffee cup calorimeter. Uh, this is used in a lot of, of you know, science experiments where you've got a thermometer in there, you've got your stir in there, uh, you've got a couple of styrofoam cups inside each other and a styrofoam cover, and you can see that you have your water there. Okay. Now a bomb calorimeter, that's a little bit different because there you're going to have your ignition wires, right, like we saw before. So just be aware there's different types of, of calorimeters. There's more simple and then there are, you know, more complex. Okay, and here's, um, you know, a more complex type uh, where it shows the, you know, the bomb area, the ignition wires, oxygen supply. Um, now, in this case, it has a magnifying eyepiece, so we can really look closely at the temperature, your airspace, the crucible, um, the steel bomb, which is around. Okay, but the, you know, basic concept is that the, the heat lost or given off by the reaction is going to be the heat gained by the water or vice versa. Okay, so by measuring the temperature change of the water, you can calculate the heat gained or lost, which you can then calculate, again, how much heat was gained or lost uh, from the specific amount of a substance. Okay, uh, this didn't turn out really well, but if we're talking about calories, this is big C calories, which is huge. Okay, uh, pepperoni pizza, half of it, that's like 13,024 big C calories. That's a lot of energy. Okay, Big Mac and medium French fries, about 820. Subway tuna sandwich on wheat bread, about 530. Starbucks What's that? Uh, vanilla Frappuccino, 439. That's a lot for a drink, isn't it? Clock, chocolate chip cookie, about 350. Mm, let's see. Beer, 153. Hot dog with a roll, 315. There you go. So, different calorie counts. Solar power. So, this is sort of changing gears a little bit. It's talking about power generated by solar. Where the photons hit um, certain types of metals that will release electrons uh, under the influence of light energy. Okay, and there's there's some that react very well, and some others not so good. Okay, so you're going to be making a solar power panel with a uh, with a metal that is um, electrosensitive that way or photoelectric. Okay, active solar heating. So these are different ways you can trap solar energy. Solar power, active solar heating. And here, these are not solar panels that we're seeing here. We are actually seeing um, basically like a, a black, dark background and water is being circulated over top and the water is being heated. And uh, the heated water, um, you know, goes through a heat exchanger and uh, the warm air is used, or the warmth from that water is used to heat the house. So that's an active solar heating system. It can work in some parts of the world. Um, Canada in the winter, not so much. Okay, so that is uh, the second lesson. Make sure you submit a tutorial summary. Have a good day.